feels good. Feels real good to be back. Warriors, Merry Christmas. First of all, we're going to say Merry Christmas. Right. Man, my Christmas has been fantastic, man. I've been chilling, enjoying, seeing my friends. Friends have been coming around, relaxing, watching anime, playing my games. Life is good. Life is good. Life is good. Life is good when you're good. <laughs> So yeah, anyway, let's enough of that stuff. Yeah. Let's get into the whole reason why I'm here and you guys are here. Yeah. We're reviewing Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. So, first of all, what I want to say is This movie, this is gonna be a spoiler free review. The movie was godlike. It was better than I expected it to be. Right? I didn't expect the movie to be as good as it was, right? I mean I did hear, right? And I don't watch reviews or nothing, right? But I did hear that the movie was getting positive reviews all over the place. Yeah, everywhere was saying the movie's good, like the movie's good, movie's a 10 out of 10, movies are fantastic. Even on Rotten Tomatoes, I heard it had like a, a rating of 100%, right? And then I think even right now, the lowest it is is 98% because you're going to have some haters, yeah? That's very, very rare. Do you know what I mean? But I don't buy into that stuff. I don't buy into anybody's opinions but my own, right? So I went, went into the movie with a fresh mind. I'm going to watch a movie and judge it for myself. The movie assaults your senses. The visual, the world building, the characters, the music, the colours, how vibrant, the way they tell the story. With like the kind of like the, like you know the way in comic books, the way a comic book is formatted is with um, panels, comic book panels and stuff like that. The movie is literally like an audio book and a, a visual book, an audio, an audio novel and a comic all in one. It is just incredible. Like, and one thing that when I was watching the movie, because I could tell when I was watching it that this is going to be like Batman. Yeah, as in, I'm not going to see Miles Morales for the first half an hour. Right? So once I put that to the back of my mind and accepted that, that took me about four seconds to come to that realisation and accept it and just watch the movie you don't actually notice how long you don't see Miles Morales for in Spider-Man uh, Spider mode right because you don't see Miles Morales as Spider-Man until the last I don't know 15 maybe 15 minutes 20 minutes of the film not even now I won't say even 20 minutes I'd say maybe 15, 17, 15 minutes of the movie is when he's in full Spider-Man mode, right? But the movie is such a interesting world. The way they tell the story of Miles, right? The way they tell the story of um, his uncle, you know, Aaron. The way they tell the story of the whole world, the characters, um... Peter Parker, the alternate timeline versions, the other Spider-Men, um, like Noir and Gwen Stacy. You know, the way they tell the story is so good. Because this movie is a character-driven movie first. And you feel that. You hardly notice, basically, if I'm being absolutely honest, you hardly notice you don't see the spider um, Spider-Verse spider characters in full Spider-Man mode. You don't really notice it feel it or yearn for it because the movie itself is there's so much going on that grabs your attention that you're not looking for the absolute most basic obvious thing which is action super cool set pieces you're not actually looking for that because the movie the story that they're telling is such a good story that was longer than a minute sorry <laughs> So, yes, I want to end it there for my spoiler-free review. Now, we're going to go into the spoiler review. 10, 
nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. We're here. Okay, that's a stick around if you're still here. So we're going to get into the spoiler review, the complete review, if you like. So, first of all, I want to start off with Spider-Man Miles Morales. Yeah, very unique character, interesting character, a very different Spider-Man than your normal Peter Parker Spider-Man, right? He's actually more powerful than Spider-Man, actually, right? I mean, the first time I ever heard of um, Miles Morales, yeah, was in Young Ultimates. Yeah, when he was with, um, who was he with? I think he was with Kitty, I know who he was with, what am I trying to remember for? He was with Kitty Pride, Cloak and Dagger, Jessica Drew, and Bombshell. I know that, yeah? So basically, um, those were, that, those were the Ultimates, the Team Ultimates that I, um, I read, yeah? But I know that he came out in the Ultimates... Fallout. That was when he first got introduced, yeah. But I didn't know about um, Miles Morales at that point, yeah. I wasn't looking for Miles Morales when he was there because um, I did take a break actually from comic books in two from two from two thousand nine to two thousand twelve. I did take a break from comic books, like just in general, because it was so much to follow and I had a lot going on, right. Good stuff going on, right? Life building stuff going on, yeah. Um, so oh, it's only after I just, I just was amazed by um, Young Ultimates, and I was like, "Who is this character, Miles Morales?" I was like, mind blown, man, by this character. <laughs> no pun intended by that. Uh, basically, so I went back and read the original Ultimate Fallout, yeah, um, and yeah. Man, like the character's godlike, man. I mean, look, if you look at his powers, yeah. So, Miles Morales' uh, powers, yeah, he's got um, Venom Blast, which is basically he can control electricity, yeah. This is the bioelectricity in your body, but his one is super amplified, yeah. Uh, basically, so he's got like Venom Blast and he's got Mega Venom Blast because Venom Blast can basically shock um, anybody. Right, it can like, and it is powerful, right? Because basically, he he basically beat Omega Red, yeah, with the basic version of Venom Blast, right? Like a proper mutant super villain, Omega Red. So he's like, he is very very strong. But then he's got one called Mega Venom Blast, which basically can. It can level a building. Yeah, it's like proper bloody powerful. Yeah, you know, he's got um, cloaking ability where he can make himself go invisible. You know, um, he's of course, he's got superhuman strength, superhuman agility, you know, all that type of normal stuff. I mean, the main thing that it is with um, Mars Morales is actually the fact that he's got the cloaking and he's got the Venom Blast, you know, the electricity, you know. And the thing is about this movie, even, it shocked me. There were things that surprised me. I bloody know Ara Davis is, um, is Prowler. Yeah, when I was watching the movie, the thought did not occur to me that he's Prowler. When it was revealed that he's the Prowler, yeah, I was shocked. I was like, oh, shit. Oh, yeah, I knew that. <laughs> I had one of those moments in the movie, right? Because when I'm watching a movie... And I just want to enjoy the movie. Man, I did, I literally go into dumb mode. Like, I become super dumb. Yeah? Because I just want to enjoy the movie. I literally forget everything I've watched. From trailers or anything. And I just enjoy the movie. And I did that for this movie. And I loved it. Like, the movie is so visceral like the colors the character building the world there's so many characters interesting fascinating characters as i said before you see gwen stacy yeah that's his woman spider gwen yeah that is that is miles Wallace's girlfriend you know 
he's always, she's always putting it on him. Or he's always putting it on her. Yeah, and they always end up like kissing or going out or whatever. Yeah, so it was. that's why it's very interesting and cool that Gwen Stacy was there. You also had Peter Parker there. Because you've got to always remember, in Miles Morales' story, Peter Parker's dead. He died, you know. And the, the fact that um, him being involved in his uncle's death is a real thing. They kind of changed it because in the comic book, we're not going, we're not going to the comic books, yeah? But it's Miles Morales that actually killed his uncle, basically, because he was fighting his uncle, but he knew it was his uncle at this point, yeah? But he, what was it? He, he picked up a weapon. I think it was, I think it was Shocker's weapon, right? And it was, it's not Miles Morales' fault that he died, but it was basically because Miles was fighting his uncle, that his uncle picked up a weapon that was unstable and it blew up and it killed him, right? So Miles Morales is also is actually responsible for the death of his uncle. In this one, they didn't do it like that, but he was he had some type of involvement in his uncle's death because it's only when he showed his face that his uncle dropped his guard and then got shot. You know, so it's like uh, all those kind of things. It just makes you more interested in the world, in the story, in the character. And all that builds on to Miles, right? Because at first, you can't see how he can become the Spider-Man the universe, his universe needs him to be. You know, but by the end of the movie, he becomes that. Like, that's the one thing I say that pisses me off about this movie, is the fact that you don't see Miles Morales in Spider-Man until the, basically the end of the movie. And then when you do see him as Spider-Man, he is godlike as Spider-Man. Miles Morales, he is, like, best Spider-Man. This, by the way, is the best Spider-Man movie ever. The way they tell the story with the comic book kind of, like, panels... But with the world, but we're still with the speech bubbles and the description of the events going on in the little boxes with the meanwhile and all that type of stuff is so, it was so cool. You know, the way that something could happen and when they were uh, basically given a spotlight to, um, I don't know, Spider Pig, yeah, they basically gave him like a little bit of a three minute origin inter inter introduction and they did the same thing with peter parker for his universe and then the same thing for spider gwen and same thing for spider noir and so on it was so good because that's what i did and also another thing that was good like, good very good about this movie was even the other spider characters that were in this spider men spider women they were not side characters they were main characters i mean miles Morales was the main character but everyone else was still a main character. You know, I thought that was sick, man. You know, like, it's actually the best Spider-Man movie. It's, for me, 9 out of 10. Free. Easily, 9 out of 10. The only reason I don't give it a complete um, 10 out of 10 is simply because it's not good. But I'll say it. I wanted um now I now I've come out of the movie I realize that when I get the movie on Blu-ray I'm not going to have an hour of Miles Morales Spider-Man That's basically it The movie is godlike yeah but I would have loved it if I had like an hour of Miles Morales Spider-Man just doing what he's doing being cool on the rooftops, jumping off buildings, doing backflips, running um, on trains and swinging through the city. And, you know, just, I just would have loved that. But that's me being super extra, 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 right? Um, and pretty much that's it. That's literally my only gripe with the movie was I wanted more of Miles Morales. And now we know, we definitely know we're not going to get more of Miles Morales. There's not going to be another Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse with Miles Morales. They're going to do one with Miguel O'Hara. Yeah, Spider-Man 2099. 
Yeah. So we definitely know we're not getting miles again. We're getting, we're getting which is cool, man. Which is cool. Do you know what I mean? Um, I mean, um, O'Hara, uh, basically. Um, what we're definitely going to get is we're going to get um, O'Hara going back into the past. Because you saw him in a timeline. They did some mad thing where he was like normal. And he was in the future. And he went all the way back to the old time when Spider-Man was drawn. Like basic, basic style. Yeah. Because the thing is with um, 2099. Yeah, Spider-Man. Um, his story. I didn't actually understand. I didn't like his story, basically. Um... They've actually reset his story. Um, recently, not recently, but a couple of years ago, they reset his story. So I, to honest with you, I don't know what is actually canon and what isn't canon, right? It's like Broly, yeah. I'm gonna do a Sp um, Dragon Ball Broly, um, Dragon Ball Super Broly review, by the way, just so you know. Uh, so. Yeah, I mean, that character, I mean, the thing that I did like about that was the fact that America is run by a corporation, Alchemax. Um, and it is, that company is America, right? And O'Hara... Oh, what are doing? I've just said spoilers. That can't, that's not spoilers. Oh, no, no, we're not talking about that. We're not talking about that. But the next one's going to be a good one. It probably is going to be a good one. You know, um, Miguel, he's Mexican, you know, so he's a different type of Spider Man, which is interesting, yeah? Because, I mean, first they do one with this Spider Man, you know, and he's black, and then they're going to do another one with um, Miguel, and he's Mexican. They might do another one. With Silk. I don't know. Spider Gwen. I mean that could be pretty interesting. You know. They might even do one with Ben Riley. So it's interesting. I like the way they're doing different Spider-Mans. Without Peter Parker. Being the central character. They're doing it with this. They're actually doing a Spider-Verse. Of different Spider-Men and women. I'm up for it. I'm up for it. I'm ready. I'm ready. You know, uh, but yeah, man, as we're going back to um, Spider-Man um, into Spider-Verse, which you should be in the first place, shouldn't deviate from that, right? I mean, the one thing I would say is um, maybe the main villain basically being, um, what's his name? Oh, I forgot his name. Kingpin. Yeah. It works. The reason it works is because it's not about it's not about Kingpin. It's about him creating a device that is warping reality and then trying to save the world from the realities imploding and folding on each other. So it's more than Kingpin. And also, it is a, it's a realisation story of sometimes in life, you ain't got a choice, you can't be a little bitch, you accept the realities of life, responsibilities of life, and all the shit that comes with it, and man up. That's what I like about Miles Morales in it, in this movie, is the fact that he is that guy. That he ain't got no choice but to step up. Because no one else is going to. You know what I mean? And then it's got all the other crazy that's going on inside it. You know. Look man. I even like Dr. Octavius in this movie. Yeah, Dr. Octavius was cool. The way they did that character. was brilliant. It was so good. It, it Everything matched the movie. There was nothing that I felt was weird or out of place in this movie it was pretty much perfect you know to me I and mean, in terms of the way they uh, the, as i said the only thing 
that I did not like, this, like about this movie was there was not enough Miles Morales in Miles Morales Spider-Man mode. You know, everything else was godlike. Even the way they told the story with Aaron, um, Aaron Dave, um, basically Uncle Aaron, yeah? Morales' um, uncle, basically was the Prowler, because he did steal the Oz formula originally from Oscorp. That happened. That was a real thing, right? Um, and just a little fun fact, Mars Morales is immortal. Just want to throw that in there. Because the, the same chemical, basically, the Oz formula that was put into, that basically that, that bit Mars Morales is the same formula, basically, that um, has turned um, Norman Osborn into the Green Goblin. Yeah. The only thing that is different, the reason he's not gone crazy or whatever, is because the spider that actually had the um, the Oz formula inside it mutated, yeah? So that was a unique mutation in the spider, which obviously had effect on the formula. So when it bit Miles, it changed Miles. Basically, it changed the, the compound and the way that formula actually worked, right? I mean, so that is that's canon because that happened to Aaron. He stole the formula. Basically, um, it was in his bag. Um, the spider, no, the spider was in his bag. Basically, it came out. I think something like that happened. I can't remember exactly. Oh no, no, no! I think they were at the back. I can't remember because I've only watched a movie once. I know that um, Aaron was showing him a place where they can chill. Basically, and they can he can unleash his creative energies in painting. So I can't remember if they showed the fact that he the spider was basically in Aaron's bag, and it creeped into um, Miles's hood, and then bit him afterwards, or if it was actually just inside the sewer bit, which is behind the lab. I can't remember. It's actually quite embarrassing. Because I'm doing a review, talk about this stuff like I know this stuff, but I'm actually unaware because I've not done any research. How embarrassing. Oh well. What it's like to be a subscriber of Lionheart's Mind Explosion, right? But you know, you guys all right, you know. You, you're with me, you're with me. <laughs> so funny. So yeah, man, I mean, the, as I said, the movie, 9 out of 10. I really like the movie, it's a brilliant movie. Uh, definitely recommend you go watch it. It's uh, it, you've never seen anything like. If you haven't watched it, it's like nothing you've ever watched before. It is very, very fascinating and interesting and innovative in terms of storytelling, basically. And uh, yeah, must watch. All right, warriors. I want to say thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Um, yeah, I didn't expect this to be this long, but. It is what it is, right? So my next video that I'm going to do is I'm going to be reviewing um, Dragon Ball Super Broly. Yes, I've watched the movie. And I'm going to tell you guys all about it. Well, I don't know if I'm going to... Okay, so what I'm going to do with that one is I will tell you... I'll do a review. But I will not say the ending. Compromise. Alright Warriors, until then, stay blessed, take care, and catch you later. Merry Christmas.